Going on to Hankster's Hot Rods, and today we've got another new addition to our inventory. This being a 1967 Ford Mustang convertible here, as you can see. Wimbledon white with the blue stripes on the lower body there. Very nice and classy uh, color combination for this car. So before we get too in-depth with our car today, uh, just the way circumstances were for this particular car, we went out of sequence just a little bit with our video clips. So we ended up doing the underside video clip before this one. So I kind of want to back up just a hair and kind of explain to you, uh, I made a mistake whenever we went over the engine and the rear end on this car. So we'll clear that up right now for you and then we can continue on with the rest of it. So in stating what the motor was on this car, I originally stated it was a 289 uh, Windsor Blog, the Hypo model. Um, so I want to clear that up. So of course, we run the engine casting numbers on these cars all the time to determine that. So that is what the engine casting number tells me that it is. But when we went back in and we researched did a lot of uh, looking on the internet, we find out that yes, this would have been the same block used in a hypo build, but back in the day, they built these cars and they only used the best blocks for their hypo builds. This car actually has, it is the 289, it is the Cleveland motor, um, the Cleveland based motor, of which this one was actually cast out of the Windsor plant. So that's where a little bit of the confusion comes in with this motor. But it is a 289 Cleveland, okay, and it is the two barrel model, so it's not the hypo. Uh, and then, of course, when we go under the hood, you'll see all of that, and we will point that out to you again. The other thing was the rear end, too. I believe I may have mentioned it was a 9-inch Ford, and in this case, it's an 8-inch Ford housing. We have the, uh, the door code or the door data plate code on this, which was a zero, which would tell us it was a 279 gear ratio in this car, too. So, just wanted to clear those things up. So now we can continue on with the rest of our uh, little video here. So, again, Wimbledon white, blue lower body stripes on our car. We have the 289 fender emblems down here that signify what is underneath the hood here. Now we have on this car, very traditional, the 14 inch, these would be the rally wheels for this particular car. Steel wheels, got your trim rings here or beauty rings and then you've got the center caps there and mounted on all four of those all the same size bf goodrich radial ta tires those are 20570 r14s the whole way around on this car which by the way the tread on these are all just like new for this car uh, you can see we've got the bright wheel lip moldings here on our car we also have this bright rocker trim down here too very nice and straight the whole way down the side of the car there too the other thing that we always do is just look down the side of the car to see how straight everything is. So we can see from the fender to the door, door to the quarter panel, everything falls right in line the whole way down the side. As far as the body work, the panels themselves, that is all nice and straight down the side. It's not wavy at all in this particular car. As we come back to our door, we can take a look at our gaps here on the front side of our door and also back here on the rear of the door. And we can see that those are pretty uniform. The door's been adjusted really nice in this car. All of the bright work, uh, including all of our moldings around the windshield here. Of course, you got the really wide piece here because of your convertibles, they always did have that wider piece here. Your wing windows, all the trim around those, all of that bright work, the chrome molding, stainless, all of that, is all in really good shape for this car. Nice and straight, there's no dents or anything in any of it that I can see. Although it is a little bit older though, and you can see, you know, some of that. But again, no, it's all straight, no dents, not really scratched up or pitted at all. Looks to be in good shape. We have a driver's side mirror here, and that mirror is a remote mirror. So you're able to adjust it from the inside of your door. And then again, all of your bright work, including door handles even, those are in really good shape. No pitting on those, so it looks really good. We'll come back here and take a look. Just open our door up. Brief look inside here. You'll see our Wimbledon white continues on the inside of the door here. We've got the rubber bump stops, top and bottom. There is your door data plate there with all your codes on it there. 
Of course, we've got an all black vinyl interior, bucket seats, factory instrumentation, really no modifications made whatsoever on the interior of our car. Threshold plates look good on this side too. And then we'll close this. You can see that that closes nice and easy. Our convertible top. Now again, this looks like it could have been maybe the original top for this car, but it is in really good shape. Again, it shows, you know, a little bit of age here and there, but again, all of your seams are all nice and tight the whole way around. All the stitching, there's no rips or tears, there's no fraying whatsoever, and all of the trim or the piping around the edges, that is all intact, all in good shape with no tears or no frays whatsoever there either. So your convertible top for the age of this car is really in good shape. Of course, we've got our trim here around the back window with the little snaps in it for your uh, convertible top uh, boot. Uh, whenever you have the top done, you can snap that right in place. Be a you know, real nice looking vehicle with that top done. So then our quarter panels, again, got that bright wheel lip molding. We've already gone over the wheels. Brings us to the rear of the car. Now right now you can see that our car has the, uh, the rear uh, luggage rack here mounted on the trunk. It is in great shape too. We'll take another look at that as we come around the back side here. But again, it's shined up real nice, all intact, nice and tight, no scratches, no dings, no nothing on that. So again, it looks real nice. And All right, now that we're behind our car now, we'll take a look. Like I said, the back section here of our convertible top, uh, a little bit more in depth. So you got this trim up around the, the very edge here, up on top. That, again, the piping on that looks all in great shape. Stitching, no frays, no tears whatsoever in there. You've got the plastic window back here, and it doesn't look too bad. Again, a lot of the times, from age and so forth, that these are left down for an extended period of time, you get a lot of wrinkles and waviness in them, and this one's really not that bad. Looks to be in fairly good shape as far as that goes for a convertible top window. Uh, like I said, we've got the trim around the bottom of the window here with the snaps for a convertible top boot, and I already mentioned about our luggage rack back here on the trunk lid. Now you can see on this trunk, this is mounted down real good, it's got all the necessary rubbers here underneath so that it's cushioned on here and it doesn't mount metal to metal. Um, all of your bright work here, uh, everything about it, it looks good. You got the little rubber tips here the whole way across. So all of that looks good and all intact, good and solid on this trunk lid. Um, now again, a lot of people, you know, back in the day they would have used these. But nowadays, they were, if they were on the vehicle, they're just kind of on there now for looks and the originality factor there. So again, uh, on our trunk lid, um, our gaps on the trunk here, the whole way around, you can see those are uniform the whole way around. There's no difference whatsoever. Your elevations here with your quarter panel uh, on both sides, even with this back panel back here, elevations are pretty much dead on on this car. So trunk fitment is real nice here. You can see we've got the Mustang letters here across there. The finish on those is real nice. They're not pitted. Got a nice chrome bumper here. Then our taillights. The lenses on our taillights on both sides, all six of them. And then your taillight bezels, all six of those are in real nice shape. There's no pitting on any of the, the bright work there either. So those are real nice. Got your gas cap there. It's in great shape too. Now down below in your rear valance, you've got your backup lights. That's how that would have been back in the day. Those are in good shape too. The bezels and the lenses, very excellent condition there. And then down below that, you can see the tailpipes. Now these have the, uh, the dual uh, tailpipe extension on both sides there. Looks like you got two pipes coming out on each side. Just one pipe per side, obviously it's dual exhaust. You just have the look of the four outlets coming out from underneath the rear lower valance. Uh, we'll go ahead and open our trunk lid up, take a look at the uh, trunk lid inside. You can actually hear that pop so you know that that trunk latch works. Uh, now underneath our trunk lid, again, we're painted that same Wimbledon white as the rest of the car. It's in nice shape underneath here. The hood hinge, or the trunk hinges I should say, all seem to work well. The spring back here that holds that up is all intact so it's not going to come down. 
And then also your weather stripping or your trunk seal around here, that's in excellent shape. Comes together here in the center, uh, meets up real well there as a matter of fact. So, and it's a real soft and supple too. So again, it's gonna seal up real nice for you. It's gonna keep all that water out of that trunk then for you too. Of which this trunk doesn't look like it's ever had any water in it. It's in good, solid condition here. Uh, one piece floor. Of course, with the Mustangs, your fuel tank actually mounts in from the top side here. So you won't have any straps underneath. We'll show you that in the underside video as well. But everything looks great here. You've got a real nice matching trunk mat and spare tire cover here. It is a full-size spare tire, um, so that's underneath there as well. Trunk, like I said, the floor is in great shape. You've got your original decal up here for your spare tire, jack instructions and so forth. Rubber bump stops here on your trunk lid too, so when you close it, it's going to set right against those. Uh, so again, real nice underneath here inside the trunk as well as under that trunk lid. So, all right, now on the passenger side of our 67 Mustang convertible, again, we'll just kind of quickly go through this because it's all the same that we already went over on the other side. So again, as far as the body panel alignment, uh, the elevations and so forth, as I look up across the side of the car, everything is perfectly in line the whole way up through the body is nice and straight not wavy whatsoever uh, we've already gone over wheels tires wheel moldings lower body uh, stripes as well as the rocker moldings on this car so all of that same as the other side the moldings all straight there's no dents or dings in any of those we come around our convertible top here with our molding on this side and the same thing, nice and straight. This is polished up real nice with your snaps in it there for your convertible top boot whenever you decide to put that top down. Now when we get to our uh, bright work here on our windows, the trim around those, some of our quarter windows as well as our vent windows there, they show a little bit of age, but again, it looks like everything's pretty much original for this car here. So again, these are in really good shape for what we've got. Now we do have, uh, we'll look at our door gaps here. You can see the back side as well as up front here now on this door on the driver, on the passenger side. And those are very uniform, front to back. So that door's been adjusted good side to, or yeah, front to back, uh, in and out on this car. So everything lines up really nice, matches up all of your body lines everywhere. Look real good and consistent the whole way throughout. Uh, we'll go ahead and open our door up like we did on the other side just to keep things the same so again Wimbledon white on the interior of the doors we got the rubber bump stops top and bottom all of our weather stripping the whole way around the door our door jam U seals and our threshold plates all in great shape black vinyl interior bucket seats all factory instrumentation black floor black carpeting black door panels all of which look really good on this car Again, we'll go more in depth with the interior as we get to that point. But for right now, we close the door. You can see it shuts real nice and easy. Let's come up here to the front fender. You've got your uh, antenna here. Not a power antenna. As you can see, it's already up. Uh, so that's just your fender top mounted antenna. And you can extend that if you wish. So there you have it with the antenna. Got your 289 emblem to match the other side there on the front fender. As we come forward, again, the 14 inch uh, factory steel rally wheels with the beauty rings and center caps there with the BF Goodrich Radio TA rubber wrapped on all four of those. And that brings us to the front of our car now. So, all right, now that we're here at the front of our car, this is kind of the business end of the Mustang and what we'll kind of mostly spend our time on here. So again, the front of this car, we've got a steel hood uh, inside of these little scoops on your hood, you will find the, uh, the hood mounted turn signals in here. So that's kind of a real nice feature that when you're in the car and you turn, flip your switch on for left to right turn signals, you're going to see those right here in the scoops from behind there. So again, it's a steel hood. All of your gaps the whole way around on that steel hood are very nice and very uniform the whole way around. Elevations from front fender up to the hood are pretty much dead on on this car too. 
uh, as, as the front end of our Mustang here, the hood. You can always see just a little bit of variation there with the, the headlight eyebrows here and the hood, but that was kind of uniform with all of them back in the day. So again, that's nothing that's out of the ordinary. Got your Ford letters up on top of the hood, all of which are in good shape. Of course, you've got your bright work here on the leading edge of the hood and wrapping around for that grill. You got the gray grill here in the middle, and then of course you got your uh, Mustang emblem or logo right there in the center. Of course, you can see a very nice polished chrome front bumper there that's in really good shape. And then down below, you've got your front lower balance there. In that balance, you've got your parking lights or your turn signals. The lenses on those are in good shape, and the bezels around those are also in great shape too. So again, uh, we're going to go ahead and open our hood and talk a little bit about what we have in here for our engine. So first off, the underside of the hood. You can see it's all painted the same Wimbledon white as what the rest of the car is here. So then we get to the engine. So as I started our video off talking about today, we're kind of, you know, we'll wrap up the outside video here right now with the same thing. The motor that's in here appears to be the original 289 uh, Cleveland motor. Um, this is the uh, two barrel uh, version. So you've got your stock cast intake with your two barrel carburetor on there. Got a chrome air cleaner up on top. Painted steel valve covers. You've got the breather and PCV valve in it. Got the stock style distributor. Uh, but they do have an updated coil in here. We've got a Petronix uh, flamethrower coil in here, and then they've got a nice set of Autolite Professional Series 7mm wires in here too to help deliver that spark. As far as the exhaust goes, it starts out with your stock cast exhaust manifolds here, dumping into a set of dual exhausts that go back to a set of dual mufflers. Huh? They appear to be a uh, Flowmaster style muffler. I couldn't see a name brand on them, but they look a lot like the Flowmaster. Irregardless, they're going to be a chambered style muffler with your correct style tailpipes and then the exhaust tips out the back that we touched on when we were around the backside. This car is a power steering car. Um, it is a manual brake there, four wheel drum brake on this particular car. Stock style radiator with a steel four blade fan here for cooling. Uh, and then again, it does have the heater lines all hooked up to it there. Looks to be a fairly new jet, uh, alternator on the car. Um, doesn't look too old there. Um, same thing with the battery there. So again, uh, just to kind of touch up on the motor and the whole drive line. 289 Cleveland motor. It's not the Hypo, but everything was the same as the Hypo block on this particular car. Um, the heads. Um, as I had researched, the heads there were really nothing different between a 289 two valve and a uh, and a hypo motor, other than uh, the hypo had the screw in studs and the uh, the valve seats had been redone in those. So again, pretty much the same, but you had the cast intake for the two barrel car along with that two barrel carburetor. As far as car, uh, transmission on this car, uh, we've got an automatic transmission in here. It'd be the C4 transmission. Uh, and then for the rear end, we've got that Ford 8 inch rear 279 gear uh, as far as the door data plate uh, is, uh, you know, telling us there on that particular car. So that's pretty much it for underneath our hood now. Um, you kind of know now what we have here. Uh, again, it appears to be an original 289 motor for, for this car. All right, now we're sitting inside our 67 Mustang convertible here. And you can see just by looking at it, uh, kind of a general overall, this thing on the interior is really, really nice here. So starting out at your door panels, you got the full length black door panel. All of your little bright work and trim, uh, your handles and so forth, those are in really good shape uh, the whole way around. Um, the armrests even on both sides are in really good shape. You don't see any, uh, no real wear on those and no cracking or anything in those armrests. Um, as we come a little further inside, first thing you're going to notice, we've got bucket seats in this car. Um, you've got the factory dash. It's a padded dash. That dash pad, the top of it's in excellent shape. There are no marks on it, no cracks, all of the stitching and so forth. That looks to be really great on this car too. 
far as the gauge panel, it looks great too. Bezels are nice. The lenses for the gauges are super clear, uh, and even your uh, the back uh, the background there for your gauges are in real good shape. Uh, factory instrumentation on this car, so you're going to have the fuel gauge to the uh, left of the uh, steering column there, along with your 120 mile an hour speedo. Then to the right side, we've got the uh, oil pressure gauge and your alternator gauge, and then finally here, the very last gauge that you see is your water temperature gauge. If we come a little further here to the center, this is where our radio is. Now again, this would be probably an updated radio. Uh, I'm gonna say somewhere along the lines of say one of those custom auto sound radios, which actually fit right into the stock mounting hole that you don't need to do any kind of modifications for whatsoever. That is apparently the type of radio we have. It's a digital AM FM radio. There is no cassette, but you can choose between AM and FM on this radio. Of course, we've got the floor shifter here for the automatic transmission. All seat belts are inside here, so you got your front belts and your rear belts there for the rear seat. Got the factory steering column with the factory steering wheel, of which this is the wood grain wheel, so a real nice looking wood wheel there. Again, it looks like it's barely been used. Um, all of the seat upholstery, the stitching, the piping, the whole way around, everything looks to be in good shape. There's no, I don't see any cracks or tears in any of the seats. Um, so these have either been replaced or they've been taken very well care of because uh, they look great. As far as the carpeting goes, carpet looks great. Black carpeting, of course, no fading. I don't see any rips or tears in the carpeting. Got a nice set of Mustang floor mats in here, both front and rear also. As far as center console, of course, this would not be a typical center console for your Mustang. It's aftermarket, but it gives you a place that you can put stuff in. And it's got a couple of cup holders here too for you in case you're drinking a coffee or something like that uh, while you're out cruising around. Um, you've got your Mustang trim here. You've got uh, kick panel speakers down below here, of which kick panels are in great shape too. There's no marks on any of that. Uh, and your sun visors. As you can see, you can put your visors down. They fit nice and tight. The material on these is all in excellent shape. No rips or tears. You put your sun visors back up again. They stay up. They don't fall down. So that everything fits real nice and tight there. Uh, rear view mirror looks to be in good shape. Again, the whole entire underside of our convertible top looks really good underneath here too. Uh, and that's really about it as far as the inside of our Mustang. All right, we've got our Mustang convertible here up on the lift now. So we're gonna go through the underside as we always do with our cars. And we're gonna show you as far as running gear. Uh, we'll show you the suspension, the steering, um, all of the braking components and the drive line and so forth underneath here, as well as take a look at the floors and um, you know anything uh, really that we can see, you know, brake lines and, and fuel lines and so forth. So, anyways, up front, um, we'll go up here first, take a look at steering, suspension, and braking. So, as far as the suspension goes, this is all stock factory components up here. So lower control arms and your upper A arms, that's all stock stamps components for your Ford Mustang. Uh, it is the strut rod suspension. So you'll see your strut rods here coming from your control arm up front to the frame here. Um, that's where you can adjust uh, you know, your caster and so forth whenever you get an alignment. Um, as far as the rest, we have a sway bar up here. Um, that would be factory. It's got the um, your sway bar bushings as far as the frame mounts go and your sway bar end links. Those are all in good shape. Your bushings, the rubber bushings on those, those are in good shape. They're not split or cracked out. Looks like everything's in good condition. Steering, um, all stock steering here. You do have power rack and pinion here. You can see your power, uh, your brake line, or your power steering lines, I should say, through here. So that's how you know it's power. Um, the tie rods are all in great shape. Your uh, ball joints on those are all in good shape too. The little rubber dust boots, those are all intact the whole way across. And it looks like everything's been maintained as far as been greased up and so forth. Even your ball joints here for your upper and lower A arms on both sides look to have been maintained throughout time. Uh, out at the ends then for braking. 
Uh, we've got four wheel drum brakes on this particular car. Um, so again, front and back. Um, everything looks to be in good condition though up here. And uh, as far as uh, motor, we'll go with drive line the whole way back through now. The engine appears to be the original motor for this car. When we checked out the stamping code and the date code on this, it turns out that it is a 1960 block, date coded March 17th of 1967. It is a 289 hypo block uh, with the six bolt bell housing. Uh, in combination with that, that, this is a C4 automatic transmission. The transmission here has the dust, or dust cover on it for your flywheel, so that's going to help protect it. Then we come back here to our drive shaft. It's a balanced drive shaft, so that's going to take a lot of vibration out of your drive line here. Then back into your Ford 9 inch housing, which is a limited slip unit there as you spin one tire the other goes the opposite way uh, again I've already mentioned the four-wheel drum brakes so that's what you have back here um, now to finish up the braking it does have the e-brake on this car so you can see that all your cables are here they're lined just as they should be you've got your frame J hooks you've got all your brackets all intact and it's all hooked up all the way back to your cables going into your rear drum brakes there so all of that intact and functioning as far as framework goes on the car um, you can see frame rails here what you have here are all in good shape nice and square nice and straight as far back as what they go this is a convertible so you see you've got the extra uh, bracing here also for that you've got your plate here to help hold up that exhaust uh, it's tucked up nice and tight uh, and then of course um, all the way back here as far as suspension we've got multi-leaf rear suspension you've got your shocks here again this would be your stock setup for on the back uh, and then as far as the like your brake lining um, the actual uh, steel lines and your fuel lines those are all run along the sides of the car here those are all in good shape um, there's no uh, no kinks in any of the lines uh, and as far as looking for leaks then that's something we always do also uh, we start here at the motor and kind of work our way back and as far as I can see I don't see any leaks no drips or anything like that everything looks to be dry around all the pans even back around your seals here on the back of the transmission that all looks good as well as the rear end uh, so again don't see any leaks back here either uh, again on the floors one of the more important areas here on our cars those are all nice and intact there's no holes there's no patching that I can see on any of this that looks to be all the original uh, floor pans in this car and they look to be in great shape um, now here we don't really undercoat cars um, so any of the undercoating that would have been on these would have been basically either factory undercoating or undercoating that the previous owner would have put on so you do see the textured undercoating uh, on the whole underside however it's not heavy texture it's a very light textured undercoating um, so you can see that that's been done correctly uh, even your dog legs here uh, going up and over top of the rear end those are nice and straight and square the whole way back through. Your pinch welds too uh, on your rockers, those look nice and straight the whole way back through on both sides and are in good shape. Um, so back uh, to the exhaust then, and then that's what we'll finish up with. Exhaust, dual exhaust, coming from your cast exhaust manifolds, uh, all the way back, mandrel bent tubes, uh, back into these, uh, I can't see a name on them, but they look like a Flowmaster style muffler here. Um, that would be your chambered muffler here. And then of course, you've got the correct style tailpipes up over top of the rear end, and then out the back with these real nice pro exhaust tips here, the, uh, the dual tips on both sides. Fuel tank is in excellent shape. It actually looks like it's new. And of course, with the Ford Mustangs, they drop in from the, t from the, uh, the trunk area so again you're not going to have the straps or anything that hold those it all mounts from up above and it looks good the fuel sending unit and lines all look good so everything about the underside of this car 
Again, looks really good for what it is. It's a 67 Wimbledon white Mustang convertible.